I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Now I'm recording. Okay. Good. Just making sure. Sorry yeah, for the I wasn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's that's okay. Part, that's I, a holdover I, from my job. Everything you write if by hand in all caps and you type in all caps for everything. So. That's. Yeah, that yeah. happens. <clears throat> oh, shit. <clears throat> oh no we're not even reading the ending st- stuff and i'm already yawning oh man oh the, so what um, was it uh two Th- there's someone who's leaving work because they're one of those people that leaves after like three years wherever they go so they're they're moving and uh they're like mm-hmm. hey let's um on my way out he was like hey let's go play foosball at snappers later and i said sure i'll, I'll meet up with you later um and there's the parade and the detours and shit like that so Okay, yeah, so keep going. I I want to ask you about that in a bit. Okay. Keep going. And uh, so uh, detours and all that, and I, you know, park, and then I'm um, like, hey, we're here. I also brought my my, um, my friend who met on the 4th. We came, showed up, and I was like, where are you at? And they're like, we're at this new restaurant that just opened, uh, the mm-hmm. new bar on the rooftop. So we go up, and it was nice because we hang out with some of the people that work at that bar the day prior. So and they let us on the roof when yeah. it was closed, and we were checking out the back rooms. So we just showed up, and they were like, "Hey, you didn't think we'd see you guys again?" So so then we just get right up to the roof, and then I go over, and I and um, the people with whom I work are similar to me, and also a few of them like we've never like hung out before, and uh, so we're up there. We've got our own corner on the roof. We're hanging mm-hmm. out, and it was that weird um, like like there's a point where it's like. Guys, this is just freaking work conversation. And somehow, actually, I know exactly. It's not even a somehow. It's I know exactly how it involved uh, uh, drink, drinking and having a very out, uh, uh, extrovert with us. Um, we ended up like at BSP because there's a DJ. And again, yeah. these imagine a group of people who would never do that. This is the group that, that we brought. We were like, oh, we're just walking past, spoke to the guy at BSP, like, who, who's good? And he was like, oh, it's uh, G is, is in there. So we just go in. Oh, and God. Um, the individual who was leaving, apparently, once you get one too many drinks in him, is very confident in dancing and is also surprisingly good, but does it awkward. Like, he can do all <laughs> things but awkward. And he's so got he perpetual... And he learned clearly to dance in the 90s because he has a perpetual, like, 90s music video arms that just happen all the time. 90s music video arms? Yeah. So we made this fun game because it, it was – I know people like myself and, and, and um, another person who was, who was in the group was, like, very awkward and that's clearly not their scene. So then we made yeah. the um, – uh, I'm, it's they have this, the same name as you. So it, I said, no, we're going to make a copy everything John does circle. And <laughs> we're just, uh, it was good. But then at the end, like, we went our separate ways. We went over to continue at Snappers. The rest of the group went over. To, uh, they, they attempted to Uber home. But the one person who I was like, I don't know if there's their scene necessarily the most. <laughs> like, we were hanging out talking. He's like, I was told there would be foosball. <laughs> but also clearly th- i don't think he's been to snappers before um <laughs> i was told there would be foosball yeah that's basically me going anywhere it was like i just, i was told there'd be something fun for me to do where i don't have to talk to people yeah oh <laughs> I, i'm a hundred percent the same way i just need to know like another person to be comfortable somewhere and they have to be they have to be way more comfortable than i am and then i'll be like normal comfortable that's why um i'm just not comfortable in social situations as a human because i don't i don't operate like a human in normal social situations period so 
Yeah. Oh, oh they no. So at the 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 fair, I think I said the last episode. Is it the fair? Yeah. <clears throat> and I uh, was at the petting zoo, and mm-hmm. I loudly told someone that oh, they're like, "What's that?" I was like, "Oh, those are guinea pigs. They're just baby rabbits." I clearly don't know what baby rabbits look like. They look a lot like guinea pigs. Do they? Yeah. Because I've seen baby rabbits, Brandon. This is my first time seeing a baby rabbit. You've never seen a baby rabbit? No, I've seen, like, teenager to adult rabbits. Brandon. And they had long Brandon. hair. Brandon. Brandon. What? A baby rabbit? Look at this thing. Look at this adorable I know. I creature. I gave them all the pets. I gave them all I the mean, pets. I mean... They had significantly one... longer hair and, like, the long floppy ears. This one's sad. The, the the I found another picture of a baby rabbit. It's a very sad baby rabbit. Look at this sad baby rabbit. It's got a carrot. Oh. <laughs> He's like, don't take my carrot. Yeah. This is my carrot. <laughs> I assume it has cow-wit. the cat yeah. wet. Hello? Oh, the, the real baby ones look like nightmare creatures. Oh, like pre-fur? Yeah. Ugh. Well, they have fur, but it's like, you know, that like, oh, oh, yeah. this is a dark path. I don't want to go down <laughs> this path. Oh, so um, yeah. funny story. I was uh, on, on Twitter. Yeah. I follow Lauren Coleman. Yeah. Um, he made a post about the uh, he made a post about the puck wedgie sign that I mentioned. Oh, did he? Our... OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm like 90% sure that Puck Wedgie sign was photoshopped. And he's like, he, he was on like a Twitter hunt for a, a Puck Wedgie sign. Oh. And I didn't want to be the, the guy who was like, I'm like almost positive this was. Was photoshopped? Fake. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even think the. Uh, I'm still not even positive that the police had anything to do with it. I still think it was a, a newspaper. Yeah. April Fool's joke, but anywho, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, good. There's a cat. No. Work oh through yeah. It. Work through it. No. Work through it. She's doing the <laughs> like. There's work. Work through it, cat. I don't want to clean anything. No. No. Come. No. 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 She just walked into the bedroom. I'll get it later. Do you want to sink now and you can check it? Okay. There's yeah, just, I just want to see. Just, or at least try to just, slide something under her before it comes out. That's fair. I'm going to play Mario. That's what's happening here. We're good. She worked Gone. through it. Oh, I started playing Mario. Okay. And then I made it. I talked about it on the podcast. <laughs> okay. I am ranked 60,000 for super easy mode. Okay. So there's that. Um, what was I going to say? There was something. Oh, what what parade was happening in Kingston on Friday, by the way? Children's Day Parade. Really? They uh... shut down um, between uh, Chandler Drive and Clinton Avenue. Okay, okay. So if you're trying to go I where was... the bars are, you have to turn right, go through the traffic circle, take Washington Avenue, with all that stupid traffic. Yeah. Okay, because I was... I was in King. That was where I was in Kingston on Broadway on Friday. And I'm just like, why are all these people here? Yeah, I was unaware of it. Yeah, I was too. So yeah, yeah. Um, jeez. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna we'll, we'll jump into this one because okay. this is one that I've been I've been stewing on for for a while. 44 weeks um i'm excited then i it's not it, it's a weird episode um so first sighting 1944 okay happened over the course of like two or three weeks i think okay if my memory is correct it's taxonomy it's humanoid and okay. its region is kentucky R- this is it this you already did the goblins i did the goblins so this is oh wait no you know what you know what? What? You know what? What? I forgot to change the region. It's Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I used I used the goblin 
episode is the oh, template. Oh, is the template? One. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, actually, <clears throat> what happened was uh, about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, I started, yeah. like, ten lines of research, and they all use the same, like, okay. thing as the baseline, and uh, all I've got for my American 1944 history is that that's, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. No. No? You're wrong. You're actually wrong. No? Because Teddy on. Roosevelt is earlier than that. 1944 American president. That's not Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt was president from 1901 to 1909. That's FDR There's... you're talking about. Oh, yeah, FDR. Yeah, you're right. They're related, yeah, but they're got, not. It's a humanoid, you said, though. It is a humanoid. It might be Teddy Roosevelt. Is it? Uh, but it's not at all. It's not at all. I want to call it like a, a swampy Bigfoot. Mm, you're pretty far off. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to drop that in the broadcast folder. Uh, this week's episode is uh the mad gasser of Batum. Oh, I'm excited about this one. I want to hear about this one forever. I've I've been like weirdly obsessed with this one since I read a weird US article about it like yeah. years and years ago. Mm-hmm. The uh, um that being said, yeah. Uh, it's a weird story. Uh what were you going to say? Oh, I've been intentionally cuz I knew you had this on your list. I've been yeah. intentionally, uh, like, avoiding anything that, that would lead me to that direction because I want to learn about it. Um, so, yeah, I, I this was a weird episode to research because, like, um, well, we'll get into it. So, okay. Mattoon, Illinois. Uh, it dates back to the 1800s, um, and Mattoon is a fairly small city with estimates in 2016 placing it at 18,000 people. Um, it's history before and after a fateful summer in 1944 is fairly mundane. I should just read what I wrote because that makes no sense in the way that I, I read it. <laughs> uh, it has a history with the railroad, which if, you know, it's in the Midwest, you know that it has a history with the railroad. Yeah. Um, and it's the only, only city to have a non-chain Burger King in the United States. A non-chain Burger? What's that even mean? So basically, I did s- casual research on this. Yeah. Um, and it looks like there was a family restaurant that called yeah. themselves the Burger King. <laughs> okay. Uh, and they actually fought Burger King for the rights to call their restaurant Burger King, and won. So in Mattoon, did they predate? I think so. Okay. Um, uh, in Mattoon, there is no Burger King, like chain Burger King. Yeah. There is the Burger King. Mm-hmm. And I think if I remember correctly, uh, Burger King actually offered them like a franchisor's agreement. For, like, oh, okay. Or something like that. But they, they declined it. Um, which makes sense considering it's yeah. more lucrative to be the Burger King. Yes. It's like being the last, it's being like, it's like being the last blockbuster. Yeah, um, I love follow that Twitter account, everybody. I I still am not convinced that that's actually their uh, their Twitter account, though. It's a hundred percent not. Yeah. Okay. Um. So at the time of the events in question, the population was fifteen hundred eight hundred fifteen thousand. Wow, eight hundred and twenty-seven. Um, which is taken during the nineteen forty census. Uh. Once again, uh, before I get into it, my main yeah. source for this was Mysterious America, okay. um, which is Lauren Coleman's book, because yeah. he does have a whole article on it. So I, I'm using that as my main framer for the story. There are other sources, which I'll touch on, which have different theories as to what happened. Um, mm-hmm. But I actually, in this case, found Lauren Coleman's like assessment of the situation to yeah. be the most rational. Okay. <laughs> so we'll get into that in a minute. Um, the The events that would transpire in 1944 would put the name of Mattoon on the map as the site of a major mass hysteria. So if you'll remember, 
you did the episode on uh, the Monkey Man in New Delhi, yep. and I think you mentioned the Mad Gasser in the two minute. Uh, <laughs> like briefly, briefly. I might have just said like he might have done things that sounded similar, but I didn't do any research yeah. on the Mad Gasser. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. Um. So let's take a time. Uh, let's take a take a let's, let's take, take a... a trip. Let's okay. take a trip in the way back machine to September first, nineteen forty four. Um, late one Friday night, Miss Burt Kearney and her three-year-old daughter, Dorothy, were supposedly victims of a strange attack. In the words of Miss Kearney from a Mattoon Journal-Gazette article, Miss Kearney and Daughter's First Victims, uh, there was a whole – it was a much longer yeah. thing because in the 40s, news article t- titles were like <laughs> the length of the article sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's – uh, this, is, this is a direct quote from the article – that was allegedly a direct quote from Miss Kerr. Um, it was shortly after 11 o'clock Friday night when I went to bed, taking with me my daughter, Dorothy. My sister, Miss Edgar Reedy, was in the living room of the house, and my daughter, Carol, too, and Miss Reedy's son, Roger, also too, were in another part of the house. I first noticed a sickening sweet odor in the bedroom, but at the time thought that it might be the flowers from outside the window. However, the odor grew stronger, and I began to feel paralysis in my legs and lower body. Um, so, that's freaky. Mm-hmm. Uh, I grew frightened and screamed for Martha, Miss Reedy. She came into the bedroom which uh, the, to which the door had been closed and asked me what was the matter. I told her the sensation I had, but was unable to move from the bed. Miss Reedy at once noticed the odor, which seemed to come from an open window. She summoned the next door neighbor, Miss Robertson, Robertson, who called the police. The neighbor um, just had the gnarliest fart. <laughs> well, it was a sweet odor, so I guess that's a weird fart. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, man, I've never, I've never been able to cultivate a sweet-smelling fart. There's. Have you ever seen Mad TV? Brandon. Have you ever seen that one skit where the guy can make his fart smell like different things? Oh, man, I haven't thought about that in years. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Fart smells like food. Yeah. And Brian's he, secret skill. Yeah, and if he does lavender, then he poops. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. No, that's the funny part of the whole skit. Because he's like, no, do lavender, do lavender. And he's like, I, I can't, and then he poops. I remember weird things. Are you just enjoying it now? <laughs> yeah, I, I just pulled it up. Okay. I got distracted. It's been a while. It had the mm-hmm. old Comedy Central logo, too. Oh, it yeah. Nostalgic. Um, they've gone through, like, four logos in, like, my 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 period of enjoying them. Yeah. Um, although I don't enjoy them anymore, mainly because I don't have cable. Hey. Uh, so, the police, the police do arrive at the scene. However, no evidence is found. No evidence of anyone standing at the at the window. No evidence of like gas canisters. Nothing like that. Um, when Mr. Kearney, a tax dri- a taxi cab driver, arrived at eleven at uh, twelve thirty a.m., however, I used however in two separate sentences in two yeah. separate ways. Uh, when Mr. Kearney, a taxi cab driver, arrived at twelve thirty a.m., he did see a man at the front of the house near a window. Dressed in a tight-fitting cap with dark clothing, which, if you go to the top of the document, that like picture yeah. is like an artist interpretation of what he saw. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't know. Uh, police were called again. However, once again, no evidence was found. Reportedly, Miss Kearney had recovered in 30 minutes, and her throat and mouth were burning the next day. Okay. Dorothy was said to have been ill. However, by the next day, she was fine. Um. It must be noted that the nature of Dorothy's illness is not reported in the clipping, I found. So, like, it doesn't say if she was, like, vomiting or just, like, you know, colicky or whatever. Yeah. Or just, yeah. Um, in the article, like, the original article, it was suggested that this was a case of gassing by either chloroform, chloroform ether, or some combination thereof. Okay. Um, I did do some research into how chloroform and ether uh, interacts with the human body. So... I'm going to say that this episode is real great for putting me on watch lists. Oh, good. 
We're, uh, you're, we've been on them. We've been on them. Don't even. Yeah. Pretend. Well, I've been on a watch list since like high school. So yeah. Um, I don't believe that this matches the symptoms of ether chloroform. Um, and the effectiveness window of 30 minutes seems pretty long for both of those. Like the amount that you'd be exposed to in a room. Yeah. Right. Like, I've unintentionally gassed myself on various hazardous chemicals. In the Who past. hasn't? Yeah, I mean, if you if you're maker esque, you're going to do it. Uh huh. <laughs> like, if you're interested oh, in yeah. making anything, you're going to do something harmful to your body at least once on accident. Oh yeah. Um. But I I, I don't know. It just it doesn't really resonate with me. So, me being John. Uh, this was the thing I, I, I zoned in on because it was uh-huh. also the um, like the most descriptive example I could find of the nature of the gas. Yeah. So I use this as like my – I want to figure out what, what kind of gas this technically could be. Right? Yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's do some, some – a quick history lesson. <laughs> oh, um, no. Good. At the time of the event, which is during World War II, like the tail end of it, nerve agents did exist. Yeah, of course <laughs> they did. Uh, and according to some casual research, uh, they emerged in 1936. Um, and at the very least, the notion of noxious gas- gases was in the public mind. Three, uh-huh. mustard gas. Very yes. One. Very easy one to make as well. Yeah. Um. So, as I'm wanting to do, I start exploring which nerve agents were accessible in 1944. Oh, good. So, uh, me putting myself squarely on the list. Yeah, I uh, wouldn't be surprised if I just watched you get squatted, or swatted as we do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was looking. There, my Google search history from this is a little bit dangerous. Yeah. Um, so, that might also tell us something about the nature of the attack and yeah. where we should start looking first. Because... Like, keep in mind, this is during World War II, so my brain's like, okay, um, nerve agents are still, like, the Geneva Convention is still not a thing yeah. fully, right? Like, you can do, I don't think, I I think World War II is when the Geneva Convention came about. Yeah. So I don't think gases were outlawed until after World War II. Um, no. Which I should have done. Yeah, that's after. I should have done research, but I'm, like, 90% sure on that. So, uh, hypothetically, somebody who was working in a factory could obtain these things. And yeah. the Midwest had a lot of factories, right? Yeah. So, my brain is like, okay, well, maybe this, maybe that, maybe that. So, at the time of the event, there were three G-series nerve agents that had been discovered. Yeah. Cabin, which was 1936. Sarin, which was 1939. And Soman, which had been discovered that year in 1944. Um. None of the three gases match precisely in terms of smell, although Tabin is said to have a fruity smell a scent, which mm-hmm. might be the closest to what she described. She did describe a sweet scent, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm of course, working backwards here. Um, so, and of the three, only Tabin overexposure, overexposure will result in what's known as flaccid paralysis. Oh, okay. Which I looked up, and that's just loss of muscle tone. Yeah. So, like, you'll, like, not be able to move a muscle or something like that. Um, based on a cursory examination of the CC- CDC fact sheet, <laughs> because, of course, I looked at the CDC fact sheet, uh, it does appear that the symptoms of minute exposure of taboon through inhalation do, in fact, match up somewhat to the original statement given by Ms. Kearney. Um, that being said, the fact that Ms. Reedy did not get affected by the possible gas despite smelling something, which, as far as I'm concerned, if you can smell a nerve agent, yeah, that's you're exposed good. to it. Yeah. Um, or if you can smell a gas, you're exposed to it. Whether you've been exposed to it long enough for it to matter, that's a whole other thing. Um, and the fact that the transmission vector of an open window uh, would also greatly reduce the likelihood of the gas working due to not being easily... So... Basically, the window being open, uh, it would cause it to be really difficult for there to be a high enough concentration of the gas to really mm-hmm. affect anyone. Yeah. Unless it was, like, an amount that was, like, ridiculous. Because, like I 
in my my, my copy, I do say that parts per million matters mm-hmm. because it does. Yeah, a lot. It's like a hundred percent of what matters to gas. Yeah. Um, because if your parts per million are too low, you're not going to be able. The person's not going to inhale it. Yada yada yada, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so the gas ultimately, however, and I want to. This this whole thing was kind of a waste of time. It, it, it probably wasn't a nerve. And my rationale is because I literally can't verify that it was a nerve agent. Yeah. I just picked a gas that looked a little bit like it. Mm-hmm. Right? So there's no physical evidence to claim, so it can't be tested. More importantly, the evidence doesn't actually point to a nerve agent because it is extremely unlikely to, one, only affect Miss Kearney. Yes. Uh, and two... She had a child in the room with her yeah. that was extremely young, yes. who is way, way, way more likely to be affected by the nerve agent than her. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, but the sister, the cops, the neighbors, her husband, none of them were affected by the, the gas. Uh, and this doesn't just mean that the nerve agents uh, out, out ruled, like, like ruled out. Yeah. There's also a pretty good chance that there was no gas at all, right? Because oh, yeah. somebody should have been affected. Because mm-hmm. that ga- gas is not a targeted thing. There's a reason why it's outlawed in the yeah. Geneva Convention. Well, it, it does the whole thing where it fills the volume of the thing that you put it in. Yeah. And it's an indiscriminate killer. Yeah. Um, it's very, like, <laughs> very like indiscriminate. The yeah. definition of indiscriminate. Yeah. Uh. So, like, I did this whole thing, and, like, I hit the point where I was, like, getting into the PPM and all that stuff, and then I was like, why am I, do- why am I like, arguing whether, like, trying to come up with an explanation that makes, like, this all make sense? Because at the end of the day, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Because um, ultimately, there's no way to prove whether there was even gas there at all because no samples were taken. Right? There- there's no evidence that points to it actually being a gas attack, none of that stuff, you know. And it gets a little deeper, which I'll get into in a second. Um, so before I, I litigate the whole case, let me continue to tell the story. <laughs> um, in his book, Mysterious American, Lauren Coleman uh, astutely notes that the Mattoon Journal Gazette handled the event in an, quote, extremely sensationalization. Uh, extremely sensationalized? Yeah, in yeah. street... Ex- you can do it. My, I can't. I can't. It, we have to have one of these per episode. Uh, an extremely sensationalistic manner. Um, the headline of the article claims that they were the first victims. Kind of a okay. Kind of important. The yeah. fact that they like start with that um, yeah. of the attacker may have primed the pump for future attacks. Um, that being said, other events had been occurring across the country where people were freaking out over gassings, like. A lot of them. Mm-hmm. And if you want to, like, have more detail on that, the dollop actually did an episode on this. Oh, did they? Yeah, episode 120. Um, okay. I'll have to add that to It was actually playlist. a source. It was actually right a now. source. It was a source for this episode. Because nice. I discovered it on accident. Um, And not only that, but gas attacks were on the minds of the people during World War II. Um, literally, the next article, the clipping that I found yeah. in the original story, was about an escaped Nazi. Oh, God. Yeah, in the United States, which, you know, that that could have been from then or yesterday, for that matter. Yeah. But we'll go, we'll, 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 we'll glaze over that. So, in in short, the people were primed for any kind of, like, panic yeah. attack about this thing. Because, really, if you're fearful of gas attacks, because it's supposedly happening in other parts of the country, if you're fearful, if you're in a wartime environment where you're, actively you know fighting an us versus them mentality there's an uh, ethereal boogeyman why not give the boogeyman form in the form of like a person going around gassing people mm-hmm. right um also you know the fear of like gas attacks from like an airplane not that far off no no not really because like like remember gas is a pretty like the people wouldn't have known about zyklon b but you know it's not a thing that's unheard of at this time. Yeah. So, 
Um, so reportedly, uh, the Kearneys were not actually the first victims. Uh, okay. The, that dubious honor belongs to the Rafe family uh, a day before on August 31st. Mr. and Mrs. Rafe both appeared to suffer symptoms of gas exposure. Although this is more in line with a gas leak based on what I was reading. Like okay. They either had a gas leak or um, carbon monoxide or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, it should be noted, I could really only find this on Wikipedia and the dollop episode. Okay. So, and none of the citations were verifiable because none of them uh, resolved into something I could actually read. Yeah. And none of them were primary sources. Ah, uh, okay. So, it, it's one of those situations where it's like, they may have been the first one, and they're historically, like, they become the first one, but I don't have anything that says that they were definitively the first one. Okay, um, I got you. So, reports of the gasser begin to rise at this point. Like, at least four were made on September 5th, with police even searching for a potential hideout for the gasser. Um, on the same day, September 5th, Miss Belua Cords became the first victim to have physical evidence. Um, arriving home at 10.30 that night, the Cords had entered through the back door of their house. Miss Cords then went to the front door to unlock it, which I was very confused because I'm like, wait, why are you unlocking the front door? You're in the house already. Yeah. Because to us, maybe maybe the 40s were different, and it's like, no, the, all the doors had to be unlocked, so Kramer can come in. Mm. Um but or Kimmy Gibbler or whoever I, I yeah. don't know, whatever it, the the proto Kramer proto Kimmy Gibbler mm-hmm. I don't know maybe one of the little rascals maybe one of the little rascals yeah I, I don't know they they got a pickle so that was a weird scene do you remember that from the the little no, rascals movie I I I do not uh, so they like they lure. They were guarding a soapbox car or the go kart or whatever. Okay. And they lure them away with like a pickle. Yeah. It was it was weird. I that's a weird movie. It is a very weird movie. I liked it though. I did too. Yeah. I think Danica Patrick's in it. If memory's correct. Or no, no. Reva McIntyre plays a plays a race car driver. Does she? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Uh let's see. Little rascals. Oh God! Reba. You're searching. It. Yeah, yeah. She uh, she plays a race car driver in it. Okay. Um, like it was weird because like, I think Alfalfa. No, it's it's Alfalfa, Buckwheat, Spanky, Spanky's the one. Okay, I got you. I got you. Uh, Spanky thought that she was a a he basically. Yeah. Which there was a recent. Uh, maybe it's not recent, but there was a dollop about. Uh, female race car driver uh-huh. that I listened to recently. Man, it's messed up the oh, way they treated her. Real I bad, bet. real I bad. I, oh, I say that there's something about the dollops where a lot of them don't make you go, "Oh yeah, no, they got that right." That's definitely a nice, warm, fuzzy one. Uh, I'm pretty sure a hundred. There has never, there's been like three dollops where I'm like, "Oh, this person's likable." Yeah. Like, not even joking. Uh, <laughs> So, um, <laughs> oh man, I, I, the most recent one I listened to is pretty wild, but let's not talk about other podcasts again on the show. Okay. <laughs> uh, so she unlocked the front door and she notices a cloth on the front porch, which <clears throat> maybe the forties were different, but the first thing she does is she picks it up and then smells it. Mm-hmm. That seems like a bad idea. Yeah, because uh, it was soaked in, like, a mysterious liquid. Oh, that seems and, like an even better idea. Yeah, so uh, the fumes from the cloth caused Miss Cords to have a sensation similar to coming in contact with a strong electric current. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, the feelings raced down her body, raced down her body to her feet, and it seemed to settle in my knees. It was like a feeling of paralysis. Um... So that's great. Yeah. There's a reason why you don't just randomly smell, smell stuff, people. Yeah, just, as a rule. just don't just pick just, stuff up and sniff it. Just don't. Just just don't. You'll you'll generally be better for it. Um. So the scent ultimately results in her vomiting, which is a hallmark of any of these like gassing attacks. Like yeah. usually people will vomit, which 
in all honesty, that's typically how it goes anyways, because your body's trying to expel something and all yeah. that stuff. So, um, And after this vomiting, it she had several minutes of face swelling, burning, mouth bleeding, and temporary loss of speech. Oh, good. Yeah, which to me sounds more like an anaphylactic shock than anything else. Yeah. Because that, that's like all the hallmarks of like, oh, your your body is, your immune system is attacking yourself. Basically. Yeah. Um, two hours later, all symptoms cease. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, the cloth was sent in for testing, but there were no results. Additionally, when reaching the scene, police found a skeleton key and an empty lip- lipstick tube. Okay. <gasps> Which attempt apparently, <laughs> and this is the weirdest thing in the world, caused him to believe that the gasser had been trying to break in. Okay, that seems like a jump in in, in conclusions, but okay. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know why they thought they were trying to break in. Yeah, but whatever. Um, and in one case, oh, I skipped a few. Of note, besides the gas attacks, the mad gasser slash prowler had not robbed anyone nor had it molested any of its chiefly female victims. Okay. Uh, and I want to say that the whole notion of there, it being mostly female victims might just be an artifact of the fact that most of the men in the community, like the fighting age men, were in in the war. Yeah. It's 1944. Um, so it's statistically speaking, it makes more sense that more of the victims would be female. Um. The reports would continue to roll in with increasing frequency, although I'm really not going to cover them because they almost all are identical, Mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, I think I'm gassed. Oh, I think I saw someone. Or, you know, like there was like a a hysteria happening where people were like chasing random people around. There was no stories. There was no stories of anyone getting like attacked for being the gasser that I could find. Mm -hmm. But like people would say that they'd see someone and then they'd chase after them and they didn't find them and all that stuff. So. Yeah. It's kind of bizarre that the town was on such high alert and nothing was found, but whatever. It you know, it might be that there was nothing there, most yeah, likely. Probably. Uh in one case, the sound of machinery could be heard by the victims, uh, who were Maxine and Francis. Machinery, Smith. okay. Machinery, yeah. And it was accompanied by a thin blue smoke like vapor, which spread through the room after an initial initial paralyzing attack. Um, in the final attack, September 13th, the gasser was described as a woman dressed in man's clothing. And supposedly, heel prints were found outside the bathroom, the bedroom window. Okay. That's weird. Uh, yeah, it's really weird. The actual story of the gasser, that's it. That's all that the gasser has. Like, okay. it was never seen after that event, all that stuff. That's everything. The more interesting stuff is the stuff surrounding it, as always is the case in these types of stories. Yes. Um, because the gasser itself is kind of, it's like a, fe- it's, it's a boogeyman for all intents and purposes. It's a physical manifest, it's a, a physical manifestation of people's fears. Yes. Right. Or a anthropomorphized ma- manifestation of people's fears. So as always in these types of situations, there was an official reaction. Um, because the police were dealing with a lot of fear. And uh, honestly, if you don't address something like this. Yeah. Uh, as a like an official, you're going to be having a bad time. So, the event plays out like a typical smallish town drama for the most part, mm-hmm. right? Like, police and councilmen they're overwhelmed by public panic. Public is upset and gaffes just they flow like wine. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So, with the exception of the mentioned evidence, the police find literally nothing on the gasser to substantiate any claim. Right. There's no clear evidence that someone is going around gassing people. In one particularly bad gaff, Commissioner Wright issues the following statement. <clears throat> <laughs> there is no doubt but that a gas maniac exists and has oh, made a number of attacks. Good. But many of the reported attacks are nothing more than hysteria. Yeah. Fear of the gas man is entirely out of proportion to the menace and relatively harmless gas he is spraying. The whole town is sick with hysteria, and last night it spread out into the country. <laughs> so, I just don't deaf, have any comments on that. I just don't have any yeah, comments on that. I just don't like, know what to say. Yeah, like tone deaf is 
not even good enough to explain what that statement was. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it, 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 what you should be saying is, yeah, there's probably nothing going on. Yeah. Right? Or, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, <sighs> <laughs> good there? No, not really. Um, so naturally, this failed to clom, clom, clam, calm the public and mm-hmm. only escalated the fear with a spike in sightings, although no concrete ev- evidence. Yeah. Um, since the town was high on high alert, it's a miracle that it could do anything without being caught. Like the um, the, the gasser. Like it's, it's a miracle he can move yeah. around at all. Because like literally everyone in the town is freaking out at this point. Like yeah. at, at the end of it, it's like something around like 30 sightings of this, this thing. Or 30 incidents, yada, yada, yada. Um, in the final efficient, official statement on the case... Uh, the police claim that the spell, the smell was the result of carbon tetrachloride from okay. the nearby Atlas Imperial Diesel Engine Company plant, and that all somatic symptoms were effects of mass hysteria. The company objected, citing that they use odorless carbon tetrachloride. However, the issue died out with the cessation of the attacks. Um, and also, that was like only used to like, it was like a small amount, and they only like had five gallons or something like yeah. that yeah. on site, which I think I go into it a bit more in a second. Um, so what happened? Frankly, what did happen? Frankly, nobody has any clue what happened. Okay. Did anybody? So hold up. There's lots of illustrations. Of what? The Mad Gasser. There are a lot of illustrations. I don't think anyone painted anything. I uh, I only included well, one. I don't mean picture. paintings. I mean like, was there ever? No one's been like he looked exactly like this. No, it was all it was all like vaguely. Yeah. Vague, right? The the picture, like if you look up Mad Gasser and Mattoon, um, there are a lot of pictures of it, but most of them are just like people in a gas mask. Yeah. Right. Which in the descriptions that I read, it's literally never described as having a gas mask. Okay. Tight fitting cap, dark clothes. That's the only yeah. thing it's ever described as. Or a woman dressed as a man. That's it. There's no. Like, if you look online at pictures of the Mad Gasser Mattoon, the yeah. only one that's contemporary is the one that's in our show, in, in our, our copy. Gotcha. So, it, it's like the most ill-described thing ever. Because, also keep in mind, all these are happening at night. Like, all yes. these sightings, right? And in the 40s, I don't think lighting of the streets was as big a priority. Because, keep in mind, we're just, they just came out of the, the Great Depression... Yeah. Um, the war is on, so there's not a whole lot of effort on maintaining local infrastructure along yeah. those lines. So it, it's extremely unlikely that uh, anything was really visible because, quite frankly, it was probably quite dark. Pro- yeah, probably. So, yeah. Um, but where was I going? Anywho, so ultimately, there's four possible explanations for this. Po- uh, pollution, mm-hmm. an actual gasser augmented with hysteria, paranormal entity, and mass hysteria. Um, those are the four. Yeah. Like, like consolidated, mm-hmm. um, based on what I've seen, those are the four hypotheses that I see moving around. Um, pollution, which I mentioned just before, is the official solution proposed by the police um effectively it's there's a gas leak in atlas imperial diesel engine company uh which results in the somatic symptoms experienced by the town folk the theory not great for two major reasons uh first the plant had a whopping five gallons of carbon tetrachloride which is an industrial solvent uh and it would require far more to affect the town yeah (laughs) yeah uh just just yeah Secondly, the workers would have been symptomatic before the town's hit. And based on reports, none of them were. Now, that being said, uh, in episode 120 of The Dollop, they do make a good point. uh, Because the war effort was in effect, it's not completely unreasonable to assume that maybe some people did get sick and then didn't. It was kept hush-hush by the company and the government. Yeah. 
Um, also, I didn't mention this, but there were two FBI agents that showed up to do investigation. Okay. Uh, but they're more of a footnote. Like, to me, it seems more like there was national reports about mass hysteria and they showed up to look into stuff. Yeah. But you can also then make a conspiracy theory out of that supporting the pollution angle because in that sense, the pollution could have been, you know, the FBI agent showing up could have been like trying to keep it hush hush, but that's not really what the FBI does. So yeah. I, I, what I'm trying to say is the pollution angle. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the actual gather, gasser hypothesis. The which, gather? Gather. The actual um, gather this, hypothesis? Yeah. The gather. Gather something up. Suck ring, suck attack. Ah, you didn't go there. Okay. Um, so this gets explored in episode 120 of the dollop and 550 of Skeptoid. So I didn't really go into it a lot, de- lot of detail because it's, it's been covered in other places. Yeah. Um, but... To give you like a broad overview, uh, the gasser was Farley Llewellyn, a local chemistry nerd. Um, supposedly, Farley had been had been classmates to most of the initial victims. However, he ap- this appears to be apocryphal, um, as most of the claims weren't able to be backed up with valid primary sources. It was actually mostly uh, most of it came from a book written by a woman by the name of. Give me a second. Actual assailant. Uh, oh, man. Oh, wait. Hmm? Shelby Cornthwalb. I used to know who the person was. Shelby Cornthwalb. I, I forgot to, to make a note of it. Um, but regardless, there was there was this hypothesis that a, a man was responsible for it. And it, it wasn't great. I think the person was also supposed to be like gay or something as well. And it just seemed like weird gay baiting yeah. along those lines. Um, I, I remember reading that somewhere, but um, yeah. It, it, Maruna. Maruna was the name of the person. Uh, sorry. I should have, I should have actually, Oh, uh, high school chemistry teacher, Scott Maruna believes that the attacks are the work of an actual flesh and blood mad gasser as detailed in his t- 2003 book, the mad gasser Matoon, dispelling the hysteria. Uh, yeah. Ma- Maruna pointed to a town loner, antisocial, homosexual, alcoholic, and living in a trailer in his parents' yards, Farley Llewellyn. Uh, so yeah, this, this guy, this, that was from the, uh, the skeptoid episode. Okay. Um, I, I honestly didn't cover that mainly because, I don't think that there's any real teeth to that argument, mainly because if you look him up, and I guess uh, Skeptoid did look him up, um, there are people with that name, but none yeah. of them are a, a Farley. So it's most likely that that dude was not a real person. Okay. Or it was like some conflation or come up combination of multiple people. Uh, regardless. Um there is also a paranormal angle, according to Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, Go and on. generally, generally it's aliens. Uh-huh. But I can't find literally anything else to support it. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that figures. That figures, though. That makes sense. It's, yeah, it, it was just like, yeah, it's probably aliens. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Then. Sure. Um, the most credible... Uh, Wow, I cannot write. The most credible of the explanations was that this was another case of mass hysteria. Uh, see episode 37 of this very podcast for more details. Yeah. Um, it is of the opinion of this researcher that one or two of the events may have been the result of an actual minor gas leak or a neurological reaction, such as like a seizure, um, or maybe anaphylactic shock, or literally any other thing. Uh and this event, combined with general paranoia about gas attacks thanks to the war, similar hysterias occurring elsewhere in the countries, and a careless press resulted in a mountain being made out of a molehill. Okay. That's, cool. um, that's, that's not what I thought it was going to be, because I'd seen illustrations and stuff, so I thought people had actually seen, like, a guy in a gas mask going around. Well, people saw stuff, but it was all, like, very vague, right? Yeah. And like the first, the first incident, someone saw someone, but 
it was like an hour after the event. Yeah. Right? Or like, you actually just was, hang around. It was two hours after the event, so it would be weird to come back to the scene of the crime that soon. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was already a failed attempt, and I, I, I don't know. It was, it was just weird, right? Yeah. And um, you, like, layer on top of that, like, there's the only physical evidence that was found in this case was a cloth, a empty lipstick tube, and uh, what was the other thing? A skeleton key? Yes. Those were the three things found, and then there were women's heel prints. That was yeah. it. So four total things across all the, like, 30-some-odd sightings or so. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's a physical entity, you'd you'd expect to see something, right? Yeah. So I guess if you make the argument that it wasn't physical, it was something else, well, that then you can make that argument. But I think it's a, a very fallacious and very... Um, inexact type of argument to make, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a reckless argument. But yeah, it's it's one of those weird stories where like a paragraph is really all you need to explain it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it there's not a lot to it, really. And yeah. even even the art that's made of it, like there's only one that's concretely based on the original story. Like yeah. even reading reading through things the the addition of the flick gun i can't like which is you know like the type yeah. gun uh I, I couldn't find like a clear indication where that originated i wasn't sure if that was like apocryphal and it was created after the fact or if it was in depictions before because literally the only depiction that i could find of it that fit what i found was the one that i posted at the beginning of this episode yeah Right? Um, and if you look at that, you'll notice he's not even wearing a mask. He's wearing a knit, a knit hat in dark clothes. Yeah. So it's it's a bizarre story that's kind of gained legs in a weird way. Because mm -hmm. um, on top of that, uh, Mattoon's the only gasser that has its own, like, moniker. Uh-huh. Because there, there were other gas hysterias. Like, there was one in Philadelphia, for example. Mm -hmm. And... I think there was, like, even one or two in which people died. Like, no one died in this one. Yeah. So, it, it, it's it's kind of absurd. Like, even in the case of the Monkey Man in New Delhi, someone at least died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one died yeah. in the Mad Gasser and Mattoon. Which is good. Which is good. Yeah. But, like, if you, if you compare it to other stories, like, it, it, it's just wild that this was the one that became the like most infamous if you know yeah. what i'm saying no, no so I, I get it. yeah i mean the the one other thing though is like a lot of the imagery around it reminds me of the boogeyman from the gorillas i saw that picture it's a very and good one i actually think that the boogeyman might be in part based on some of the imagery about this so it's one of yeah. those types of things because like he does turn into a, a gaseous form and all that stuff mm -hmm. but yeah i mean i Part of the reason why I didn't do this episode for so long was because it's it's kind of a lean story. Yeah. Because like we're we, this this we're at the time of recording we're only at like fifty minutes. It's not yeah. a big story. Um, it's an interesting story, but there's there's less to it than I ever thought there would be. Is there? They, I find that with a lot of stuff. But that's why it took forty four episodes. Also, also it's kind of coincidental that this is nineteen forty four. Um, oh, I never even connected it. I like it. I yeah. I didn't connect it either. I did it on accident. But, yeah. Uh, um, it, it took a while to even get to the point where I was comfortable even writing it up. Uh huh. So, but I mean, like you said, that's that's a problem with cryptids in general. They're yeah. lean stories, because usually it's only one or two sightings, and there's very little. It's very limited. Uh, there's very limited data to support what happened in the most yeah part. so but yeah i mean that's all i got on this episode which okay. is slightly disappointing for me because mm -hmm. it's like one of of all the episodes i wanted to do like because remember when we first started this we made like that giant list yeah this was like my uh my number one idea you called it you were like brandon this was mine and it's like all right let's introduce a color code <laughs> like yeah this was this was an episode that i I have literally, I think it's like, yeah. it's like one of the first ones that I put on the list, even. 
So it's probably up there. I haven't looked at the yeah. list in a minute, but it's probably up there. Yeah, I I said Mad Gasser all caps. I absolutely want this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So. Anywho, uh, I guess I'll just do the plugs then. Cause okay. I. I'm very, 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 very bad at ending episodes. I feel like <laughs> it doesn't matter how many episodes we do. Yeah. Uh, I will always be bad at this. This particular thing. Um, although that being said, the dollop is not great at ending episodes either. Because they fine. do just like, they do just like cut sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying. Um, so, copy that was what I wanted to look at. Uh, as always, um, if you want to follow the show, we've got a ton of links. Uh, CryptopediaCast.com yeah. is our website, which has literally everything we're about to say. Um, on Instagram, we're at CryptopediaCast. And on Twitter, we're also at CryptopediaCast. i got to say that right. Ugh. You know what I think happens? I think as I, I fall into my chair as the episode progresses, and I think that puts me in a sleepy mindset. Yeah. Um. So if you want to email us, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com, we do have a Patreon, which you can access uh, through the show notes. Mm -hmm. um, you do get some special content with that. And if you are more interested in that, feel free to read the special tiers because uh, there's a lot of stuff. Um, we have a Facebook group, which sometimes stuff gets posted. In. If you enjoy the show, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. We are approaching our milestone 52, episode 52, which will mark a year. Um, so if you have anything in particular you want to see for that episode, probably start telling us now so we can get prepped. Yeah. No, it's a good um, idea. So if you have anything special you want to see or special you want to talk about, like if you have anything you want to talk about, now would be the perfect time to do it. Um, yes. Yeah. But yeah, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at mu2057. My Twitter is at jfdunham. Website, John Dunham Games. And email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Weird. <laughs>